Hello, welcome back to Outmouse Labs. My name is Penny, and I'm glad you're here. Today we're going to be looking at another uh, set of Dragon Ruby tutorials. Uh, we're going to be building Pong today, and again, just like the last set of Dragon Ruby tutorials, this is about learning how to use the engine. Of course, you're going to go out and make very different things, I'm sure. Um, I will try to post any assets or code that I uh, do create here, and you are welcome to use it however you'd like. So to begin with, with this video, we're just going to set up the basic visuals. So when we think of Pong, we think of a center bar, some scores, a couple of paddles, and a ball, right? And then a background. So to create that in Dragon Ruby, you would download the Dragon Ruby package um, and then unzip it and then rename the Dragon Ruby default name to something like Dragon Ruby Ping Pong. So it's going to have this name by default and you'll change it to Dragon Ruby Ping Pong. Once inside, you're going to go into My Game and open this in Visual Studio Code or your editor of choice. Once you're in the editor, you're going to see this structure. So we're going to have app data, font, and metadata. First thing I do, I like to have a title right away. So I go to metadata, I go to game metadata, and I remove the hashtag or pound sign and the space at, uh, around game title, and I say Dragon Ruby Ping Pong, or whatever else you want to call it. Once that's done, you can close that and open up main.rb. In main.rb, this is your entry into a Dragon Ruby program. It is where Dragon Ruby looks for your code initially. So by default, it's just going to have a method called tick, and tick is going to be filled with some default stuff. You can go ahead and delete everything in that default, and you could put everything you see in def tick, and it would work just fine, but I like to break it up into functions just for neatness sake, but that's really to make it more human readable. So I have defaults. You might also call this load or startup. This is where you're going to put the default values of your various items. And then render, or you could also call this draw. This is where you're going to draw things to the screen. Both of them require args, which comes from the def tick args. So let's take a look at defaults. So defaults, again, this is where we're putting our basic information to start with. I have args.state.bg. Um, args is referencing this, which is ultimately referencing this. It's a container with a bunch of functions that allow Dragon Ruby to work. State is kind of a container or box or blob that you can put whatever you want into. I'm putting in a variable called bg, short for background, and I'm saying that that's going to be equal to this, or if it already exists, whatever it's already equal to. So that's what the two lines and the equal sign means. If you want more details on that, you can check my previous video. So we're saying BG is equal to whatever it already is, or this. This is what's called a hash. Um, in some uh, other languages, it's called a dictionary. And what it is is a set of key value pairs. So the item to the left of the colon is the key and the uh, item to the right is the value. So we're saying x, or the horizontal position, is 0. y, which is the vertical position, is 0. The width is args.grid.width, so that's referencing args. Grid is the grid that is our window, and w is width, so we're saying the width of the whole window. Then we're saying the height is args.grid.height, the height of the whole window. And the color is an RGB value. You can look up RGB values in any kind of color checker. The one I tend to use is, moment, this right here. So it's just color picker in DuckDuckGo, and you can move it around. You're going to use the RGB values. OK, so we have 56, 23, 30, which is going to give us sort of a deep red color. Next up args.state.centerbar, same blob, we're putting in a new variable, centerbar, another hash. This time we're getting the width of the window divided by 2, minus 5 pixels. The reason we're doing minus 5 pixels is because our width is 10, so we want to center it. Our y is going to be 0, so it's going to start at the bottom of the screen. It's going to be the height of the whole window, and then a color. args.state.l score, this is going to be the score for our left paddle. Once again, it's a hash. We're setting its location at 25% of the window, the height at just under the top, 0 .9, or, uh, times 0 0.9 or 90% of the, of the window height. The text is going to be 0. The size enum, which is what helps set the size, is going to be 20. Um, and that's going to be fairly big. Our font is going to be adventurer.ttf. Your font can be whatever you'd like. You put it in the fonts. 
and just drop the file in fonts and reference it as a string value. A string value is between quotes. Okay, then a color. R score, exactly the same, but just in a different place. It's going to be at 75% of the screen instead of 25% of the screen. Um, our paddle, again a hash. Our paddle is just a rectangle. This is our left paddle. We place it, give it a color. Our right paddle, we place it, give it a color. Because we're drawing all of these images using Dragon Ruby itself, or we're basically drawing what are called primitives, it's all going to look very much the same at this stage. Our ball is yet another rectangle, yet another hash. Its location, its width, its height, and its color. And then this last one is a little bit different. So args.state.solids, this is a array. You can see that because it has the square brackets instead of the curly brackets. And this is an array of all of these hashes in the order we want them drawn. So we want them to draw the background, then the center bar, then the paddles, and then the ball. Whatever order you put it in, that's kind of how far back it is. So the ball's at the very closest to the camera, if you will, and the background's the furthest away. This is how you layer graphics. Now, def.render, or excuse me, def.render. So our, this is our render function. It takes args, and we're going to do args.outputs.solids. So outputs is a way to output to the screen. Solids draws solid rectangles. So we're going to draw out args.state.solids. This is our array up here, so it's going to draw all of that 60 times a second. And our labels, we tell it to send out our left score and our right score, which are up, up here. And it's going to draw those. We then go down to def ticks, we tell it defaults args, render args. So we want it to run defaults with args and render with args 60 times a second. And then here, this is a special command for Dragon Rumi that resets variables when you save or otherwise reset the game. When you do all this, what you get is this. And if that looks like Pong, um, I hope it does. It certainly looks like Pong to me. I've got my different colors. I've got my scores. I've got my center bar and my ball. We are ready to start adding movement and logic. So there it is, drawing a basic Pong screen using Dragon Ruby's primitives. I will see you in the next video. Oh, please consider liking and subscribing if you like this content. And thank you.